नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जायाम धीर नष्टु अभद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टकी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय experience of journaling and i will be sharing some of the things that i do <clears throat> but first i want to know from all of you how many of you are very new to the world of iskon which means okay please raise your hand i want to see 1 2 3 4 5 on this side thank you 6 okay so when i say new i mean you are not familiar with the terms we use like the lingo we have of course all of you know is krishna So whenever I say Krishna, those of you very new to Iskon, yeah, okay. 
what i mean is you are not familiar with the iskon lingo you know the iskon terminology that we use you know we we'll say krishna means god or the universe or a force higher than ourselves so and i may use terms like bhakti krishna all these are familiar to you right yes so we will uh, begin with i i just like i you know uh, <clears throat> when you go to cooking class there are different recipes taught right so you can then make your pick later on so i will share with you the 12 types of journaling that i do no please sit there is someone here so there are 12 different types of journaling i practice and um, you know so I, six of them we'll do here so six or seven remaining i'll briefly mention you know in a two or three minute what it is so at the end of this workshop our agenda is you have a fair idea of how to write journals and uh, then you can make a pick you can in fact discover your own unique ways of journaling it's not sacrosanct it is not like this is it this is the only way ideally journaling has to be spontaneous and also i'm not going to be preaching about journaling because journaling is my way of connecting with the lord your way could be chanting bhagavatam dt worship everybody has his own or uh, her own way of connecting with the lord so there is no hard and fast rule so we'll begin with the wonderful quote of shila prabhupad shila prabhupad is the founder of iskon and he said something very interesting on august 14 1972 when giving a lecture on brahma samhita in los angeles So I'm going to read this to uh, just one and a half minute of this lecture. Please listen to this carefully, and then I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, all of you are ready. Brahma is the first living creature appeared in this universe, and after his realization, he is offering prayer. Realization means you should write. every one of you what is your realization what for this back to godded he is you write your realization what you have realized about krishna that is required it is not passive always you should be active whenever you find time you write never mind two lines four lines but you write your realization shravanam kirtanam writing or offering prayers glory this is one of the function of the vaishnava you are hearing but you have to write also that then write means smaranam remembering what you have heard from your spiritual master from the scripture shravanam kirtanam vishnu all of you heard what i said just now these are the exact words of shila prabhupada anything that you found very striking in this one and a half minutes that you heard which stood out yes man back yes realization means you are active in bhakti yes at the real we have to be active yes not passive yes this okay thank you yeah sometimes one more thing that you should always watch what you think what you like and what you don't like i think okay you should right So remember and write whenever you have time because simply shabanam hearing is not sufficient. Should also write. That's what Shri Prabhupada said. Anything you found very striking here in this Shri Prabhupada's uh, words? Yes, please. When we are hearing, we might not be that attentive. But what Jolly says that we heard, what we heard, and we putting it. practice is remembering this what we are writing 
hearing we may not uh, be so attentive but when we put it on writing then we are remembering what we have heard so then we become more attentive and more active thank you that's what you got from shila prabhupada statement yes i see a hand there yes sir The first time I also heard Shri Prabhupada's lecture, this is what was what struck me the most. Because smaranam, I didn't know that smaranam meant writing. Shri Prabhupada is very clearly saying, writing is smaranam, one of the nine forms of bhakti, is remembering the Lord. So when we are writing a prayer, we are actually remembering the Lord. This is beautiful. Yes, anybody else? Yes, sir. I'll come to you later. Yeah. So, so from Prabhupada's words, what I'm hearing you say, what you found striking was Prabhupada saying that Brahma Ji, after his realization, is offering prayer. Similarly, we are practicing bhakti. Whatever realizations we get, we should put them on paper. Okay, thank you. Yes, we will take just one or two last yes. Writing is another act of reinforcement of your whole process of bhakti. Yes. And even if you write three to four lines. Yes. It's a continuous practice which will develop. And develop Beautiful. Again. I was actually hoping somebody would say this. Shila Prabhupada said, just write two lines, three lines. So, you very beautifully said, it's reinforcing your bhakti practice. Thank you. One last comment. Anybody who found something, Prabhupada's... I, I saw a hand here in the back somewhere. Somebody wants to share? Okay, what I'll do, I'll just play Shila Prabhupada's uh, words. Let's see if this works. Okay. This is transcendental music. Anyhow, it goes to Sagan and Guru. And Guru explains, by Brahma, Brahma Santa means, Brahma is the first living creature appeared in this universe. And after his realization, he is offering prayer. Uh, realization means he should write. Every one of you, what is your realization? What was his back to God of his? Write your realization. What you have realized, O Krishna, that is required. It is not passive. Always you should be active. Anyway, you find time, right? Never mind. Two lines, four lines, but you write your realization. Saranam Kirtan, writing or offering prayers, glories. This is one of the functions of the Vishnava. You are hearing, but you have to write us. Then write means smaranam. Remember what we have heard from your spiritual master, from the scripture. So, Sabalam Kirtanam Vishnu, about Vishnu, not for others. Don't write any nonsense, simple any nonsense. Ah, pausing there. So, you got the gist, right? So, writing is smaranam. If you want to improve your remembrance of God, Start writing. Srila Prabhupada is very emphatic. He is saying, write two lines, three lines, write, write. I mean, I have not heard anything more emphatic than this. So therefore, <coughs> we are going to take this as our inspiration. Srila Prabhupada wrote so many books. He wanted his devotees also to write and contribute. But here, we are going to do in this workshop, there is going to be theory as well as practical. We are going to do some exercises and uh, some of it Maybe a little difficult, but we just need to go through this workshop. 
because you get a complete exposure to all kinds of writing. Some will be very easy. So the idea here is that theory is also important because you understand the foundation of journaling. It's not simply some uh, fetish or some whimsical practice. There is a science behind it. And also, journaling workshop is different. Here we are writing not to share with the world. We are writing to discover what we know. Many of us don't know what we know. So I write not to share with the world. I write to find out what is there within me. And then when I discover, I'm surprised. And then I make it into a book. That's how all my books have come. Some people write to share with the world. So this is a workshop where we will be sharing techniques by which you could go deeper within and learn tools by which you could experience more fulfillment in your relationship with yourself and with God. So I'll briefly mention what are the six or seven journaling techniques that we'll be doing. First is free writing or morning pages. We'll begin with this. Then awareness journal. Prayer journal, gratitude journal, blessing journal, and scripture journal. These are very, very six I want to uh, do today. And uh, there is one more appreciation journal, which also we'll try to do if we have time. And there are other journals like problem solving journal, decision making. A journal, there's another journal that I practice called From Obligation to Love. There is question answer journal, and there is commitment and report journal. This is like a menu card. You know, once you know all of these things, you can pick up anything in the morning. One day you have khichdi, one day you have pizza. Similarly, you know, today morning I wrote <coughs> blessing journal and gratitude journal. Yesterday morning I wrote free writing. Yesterday I wrote for two hours in the morning. <laughs> so it's spontaneous. Journaling is spontaneous. It you know it comes from the heart. But because we are right now, many of us are unfamiliar with writing. So therefore, we are going to give a system some exercises. But that doesn't mean you have to get bogged down by that. This is just a tool for you to start. But please be free once you are out of this workshop. Allow your uh, creativity to flow. And you share your journaling techniques and your realizations with me. That will help me also. So, so we'll start right away with the first exercise. All of you are ready? Okay, so the rule is I'm going to play the kartal. So when I play the kartal, you're going to start writing. I'll tell you what to write otherwise. Okay, so when I say, when I say, when I play the kartal, you're going to start. And when again I play the kartal after five minutes, you'll stop. So the first type of journaling is called free writing. Or it's also called as morning pages. So I'll give you a background of what this is and what you're going to do now. And what are its benefits and what are the science behind it. So many years ago, I think 2010 or 11, I read a book by Julia Cameron called The Artist's Way. And that had a profound uh, impact on me. So she says, as soon as you wake up in the morning, just pick up your paper and pen and start writing for 45 minutes. I did that for six months. And I saw a lot of clarity I got. And a lot of clutter getting out of my head. So it works. So. So what is this free writing? Free means you don't stop your pen when you start writing. It has to go on and on and on. You may go blank as you are writing. I'm going to make you write for five minutes only. But in the morning at home, if you want to practice morning pages, at least 10 minutes alarm lagao. Till the alarm goes off, you don't stop your pen. What if you go blank? Then what do you do? Huh? Yeah, I'm going blank. I don't know why Prabhu gave this stupid exercise. <laughs> but I have to write. Just write that you're going blank. But don't stop the pen. The moment you stop the pen, then you're breaking the rule. Free writing is an amazing technique. But for to, to develop, uh, to discover or reap the benefits of it, you have to ensure that your pen doesn't stop. See, the whole idea is there are many thoughts in the subconscious mind. And um, we don't even know what's there. But as you start writing, you start peeling off layers eventually. And you discover um, the chitta, you know, the, it's like a mirror. You can see yourself clearly. So, journaling 
beneath the surface you see a lot of things and it's an amazing discovery actually even if your problems are not solved you know if you have a very close friend and you reveal your heart to your friend even if the friend is not able to help you with your problem but just because somebody heard you you feel relieved right so journaling morning pages guarantees that morning pages you just put it on paper and one of the most amazing thing that will happen now as you write is you will see that your mind is you are able to see your mind what's happening because it slows down our life is very very fast mumbai especially i've seen life is very fast when you go on a highway mumbai pune highway you know when your car is going fast and you seeing out of the window you can't see things clearly you may see there is a mango tree but you can't make out anything because your car is going fast but if your car slows down you can see that this tree has some 10 branches so many birds are perched on the tree so many fruits are ripe so many are unripe fruits you can see things clearly when the car slows down right similarly our minds are right now very fast we don't even know what's happening our lives are so fast we don't know what's happening inside but if we write journal we are basically slowing down our life so just like when the car slows down you can see what's there on the trees the landscape outside similarly when you start writing journals you can see the inner landscape you can see all the jackals wolves the demons inside many people are scared to go inside this forest they think it's a very lonely and dangerous forest that's why people don't like to be alone they are scared to be alone because they think there is a deadly forest inside me it's not a deadly forest just keep writing journal you'll realize it's a beautiful vrindavan forest there is radha and krishna there waiting for you but we are scared because of the first layer that we confront so free writing promises to change all of that so i won't give you a, there are many prompts you know if you're going blank you could write what makes you angry or frustrated or what your desires are or you could write about the weather in mumbai or you could write what's happening in office is it difficult to write other is there a shortage of topics <laughs> free writing is actually very easy when people tell me i'm going blank i don't know what to write i tell them you are texting so many people on whatsapp facebook you are you're so active on social media you can't write for 10 minutes so there are a lot of writing prompts i'll share that later all that are different exercises but can you just write okay can you do it so what is the rule here no stopping of the pen till how long till i play the kartal again is it clear and if you go blank what will you do you can curse me you can curse the course facilitator but don't stop the pen theek hai time starts now more time more exercises but i just wanted to break that inertia just start lot of kachra is here lot of problems are here so free writing is where you take all of this and put it on paper and i yahan se yahan pe transfer ho jata right now it's here all the problems brain and because of that what's happening to us we are always crying we are always miserable 
So what we are proposing is take out all of this, which is there here, put it on paper, burn the paper. Se. Either kya ho gaya, sir? What will happen here? This space, this space will become, and then you can use your brain for solving problem. You want to use your brain for solving problem or storing problem? Solving problem. But right now we are not able to solve problem because our brains are storing. Pura bhar diya hai problems. How many of you? This is a very bad example. Vomited in life ever? <laughs> Horrible experience. But what happens after you vomit? Relief. Nay? Yes. So free writing is something like that. It's like vomiting. So I I say this line. Sukun milta hai do loves kagas par utar kar. All of you follow Hindi? Sukun milta hai do loves kagas par utar kar. Jor se cheek bhi leta hon aur awaz bhi nahi hoti. So nobody is agitated, nobody is disturbed. And you can scream your lungs out. So I want to ask a question now. All of you wrote for six minutes. Nobody stopped your pen. How many of you wrote prayers in these six minutes? Okay, how many of you wrote your anger and frustration? Thank you. How many of you wrote your pain? Yeah, anger, yeah, pain. How many of you wrote something about hope of seeing a better future? So many of you. Thank you. How many of you wrote something good about others? How many of you wrote something about your own self-love, something good about yourself? Oh, good. Thank you. How many of you wrote about your mistakes? How many of you made a request to the Lord of the universe in your journaling? Thank you. How many of you express gratitude? Maximum of the gratitude, yes. So you see, there is no shortage of topics to write. But we have to be careful how to write. That we will discuss later. Otherwise, if you keep writing negative things, then you are feeding your subconscious mind. Although it's, it release, it's releasing, but eventually you have to learn better ways also. Okay, so first exercise all of you have done. Right? Free writing. Now the second and third type of journaling is called awareness journal and prayer journal. So please listen to this carefully. I am keeping the time for question answers post lunch because post lunch you may be feeling a little drowsy. So we will do the theory, some exercises now that your brains are active and fresh. So please listen to this, awareness journal and prayer journal. We are going to club them together and you are going to do this, you are going to do both types of journaling at the same time. So first, please understand what is awareness journal. Awareness journal means to separate yourself from your mind. Right now, our identity is merged with the mind. We take our thoughts seriously. Like when you are disturbed or when you are sad, how many of you say I am disturbed, I am sad, I am angry. This is what we naturally say. But by this journal, if you practice awareness journal, you will reach a stage where you will be able to say, I am okay, my mind is right now very sad. My mind is angry. My mind is disturbed. That is different than saying I am disturbed or I am angry. The ability to separate ourselves from the mind is extremely important. Like, you know, I was telling the one uh, Radhika Kishori Mataji, I think, I was just telling her. Because this workshop, uh, journaling workshop, yesterday morning they put up a poster in the notice board. So, I thought many people were deprived of knowing about this workshop. So, I, I realized, I was telling her, I said, my mind got disturbed that no, my mind got my mind was disappointed and disturbed 
that people are not informed about this workshop. It spontaneously came out of my mouth. <laughs> the idea is you separate, we separate our emotions, our troubles from I. I am not my mind. That is awareness journal. So you are going to write whatever the mind is saying. So when I practice awareness journal, I, I, I can share my yesterday's something that I don't know. I'm not confident. <laughs> So, you know, it's like this, you write, um, whatever the mind is saying, you write in the third person. My mind is now saying, like when I write in the morning, sometimes I write like this. My mind now says, check the WhatsApp messages. I just write what the mind is saying. I don't check the WhatsApp messages. My mind now tells me, go get up and go to the washroom. My mind wants to know what's happening to the evening workshop. My mind wants to know if Govind Prem is all right. Whatever the mind says, you keep right. That's awareness journey. At the end of five minutes, you'll be amazed. Wow. My mind and me are different. There are so many voices up here, right? Just separate those voices from yourself. That's it. Is it, is it confusing? The difference is in free writing, you can write anything. You can write about the weather, you can write about office politics. But here you are separating the voices of the mind. You are actually becoming aware that it is not you. In, in free writing, you are just writing whatever comes to your heart. Yeah, but your identity is merged with the mind there. Here you are separating yourself from your mind. You are giving a name, you are giving an identity to your mind. It's not you. The voice here is not you. In free writing, whatever is coming, you are putting it on the paper. But now you are separating yourself from that voice. Uh, whatever is coming, say, okay, I say, I've given a name to my mind. It helps me uh, do things better. I've given a name called Chanchal. Chanchal is a very sweet sounding feminine name. So my mind, I call my mind as Chanchal in the morning. Aware, whenever I'm writing awareness journal, See, when I what is awareness journal? When your mind is very really disturbed, you are restless, you are agitated, simply write what the mind is saying. Now my mind is saying, why this devotee spoke like this? And then even as you are completing the sentence, you will realize the mind has said 10 other things. Then again, whatever comes, just whatever you are noticing, write it down. See, you see this video camera right now? The video camera is looking at me. Even you are looking at me, but there's a difference between your observation, observing me and the video camera observing me. When you are looking at me, you may be judging. What is he saying? I don't understand what he's saying. It makes sense. Or you may be, when you're looking at this room, you may be judging. The room is very hot. The room is cold. Video camera is simply observing without judging. I'm asking you, can you switch on the video camera inside your heart, inside your mind, in your inner world? Switch on the video camera. Don't judge. Simply write what the mind is saying. That is called awareness journal. Alag -alag thoughts aata rata hai. Now my mind is thinking what to write. My mind is wondering when the workshop, when this workshop will end. My mind is asking what is for prasadam. My mind is saying go to the washroom. My mind is demanding to drink water. Whatever the mind says, just put it as a mind speaking, not you. So at the end of the exercise, you will realize you are separate from your mind. That is called awareness journal. Prayer journal is prayer is an activity of the soul. The soul is calling out to the Lord in love. That is prayer. So when we offer prayers to the Lord, generally, when we write a prayer, Krishna, I love you. Krishna, I want to serve you. When we write this prayer, generally you will see it has to be very spontaneous. It has to be filled with love. But often we are unable to write a prayer meaningfully because the mind is talking too loud. We can't hear our own voice. So therefore, what I do like this, I start with the prayer journal. I start like this. This is what you're going to do when I say start. You're going to start with a prayer to your respective Lord, your Ishtadev. Start writing the prayer, whatever prayer you want. Krishna, I love you. Krishna, I want to serve your devotees. I want to improve my chanting, whatever. 
at some point of time as you are writing this prayer you may feel you may feel dry you may feel are dil se nahi likh raha hai prayer dil se nahi aa raha hai that means somebody is talking very loud because of that voice you are unable to call out to the lord in your voice see you have a voice you have a voice that voice you are not able to express that voice you are not able to discover because the mind's noise is loud so you stop the paragraph i stop that paragraph where i'm writing a prayer and i start a second paragraph which is awareness general i simply write what the mind is saying without judging do you get it yes i'll give an example so you know in the guru puja kirtan sometimes the kirtan is so loud pa the, the person playing mudanga wampurs so when I'm, somebody coming and talking to me i can't hear what he's saying i have to go outside the hall and then i have to listen to him what he's saying similarly sometimes the mind is talking so loud that we can't even we don't even know what we are praying we are disconnected from the lord so at such times what i do i go outside the hall in the sense i just listen i just write down what the mind is saying without judging and then at at certain point of time what happens the mind becomes quiet the mind has nothing to say because just you have apprehended a thief the mind is like a tantrum throwing spouse unreasonable going on a rant non stop and you are simply noting down and when the mind is blank what do you do stop the paragraph start a third paragraph and write the same prayer which you wrote above and you see the difference this time it will be your voice because when the mind is quiet then your voice is surfaced does it make sense what i'm saying okay I, i'll just share my journal i put it on the computer krishna i love you i really want to serve you just two sentences i wrote and then i stopped the i put i realized that this prayer is lacking uh, substance a mechanical ritualistic something within me is loud disturbed not present because of which this line is not carrying that energy so i stopped then i started practicing awareness jnana now chanchal now chanchal i told you is the name i have given to my mind because krishna arjuna calls his mind in the gita as chanchal chanchal means restless it sounds the name sounds sweet but when the mind is too treacherous i give a different name i don't call the mind chanchal i call the mind golum golum is a character from gear tolkins lord of the rings and hobbit series golum is a uh is a very terrible creature he serves his master and also is plotting to kill him so our mind is golum and ch- uh, chanchal so sometimes I, so i write, so this is what i wrote the first paragraph was krishna i love you i really want to serve you and your devotees stop you can go on writing the prayer if it's if you are comfortable do you get it don't change prayer journal just write beautiful prayers to the lord just be yourself don't have to change but if you are like me you are struggling you are not always present then stop the prayer journal start awareness journal this is what i did now chanchal is fearful about the consequences of yesterday's class she says i shouldn't have spoken about relaxation yesterday she says people were confused she says there are they are not ready for this yet now chanchal is saying it is good i spoke this class now she says i should rush for mangalarti and she is fearful of missing sankirtan i'm just writing the about the voices that are coming in my head at this point of time my mind became blank it had nothing to say i was like kuch nahi hai koi aawaz kuch hi nahi hai so then there was peace there was silence now what what do you do at such time you again come back to krishna please fancy it like i fancy it like this on your left you are in the center on your left is mind a 15 foot tall giant with horns coming out with a ferocious teeth with big round eyes who is constantly shouting wa wa non stop and we are our neck is turned towards this demon and we are saying yes sir yes sir we are obeying his orders just saluting him and doing whatever he says 
Spiritual life is meant to turn our neck, which is tilted to the left. It is supposed to come first on the on the center, and then we are supposed to turn on our right side. Who is on the right side? Krishna, who is waiting to embrace you. But we are unable to recognize Krishna's voice. We are unable to connect with Krishna because our neck is turned towards our left side. Is it clear? So prayer generally when we are turning to our right and con conversing with Krishna, but we are seeing that I'm, I'm, I don't hear, I can't hear what I'm telling Krishna. And maybe Krishna is saying something I can't hear because there is somebody shouting a lot on my left side. So I stop prayer journal, I turn on my left, I simply practice awareness journal, I write down what the mind is saying and when the mind is quiet, thank you, then I turn on my right and I offer prayers and you will be amazed when I wrote this same thing, Krishna I love you, I really want to serve you and your devotees, this time these sentences carried lot of uh, emotion. There was a lot of energy in those sentences because that was my voice. It had been stripped of the mind's drama. Do you get it? So keep switching between prayer and awareness. Don't stop the pen. After this exercise, I'll tell you the psychological benefits of this exercise. But first, are you willing to do this? Or maybe if you want, if it will help you, I can share yesterday's I don't know if I find it. Just give me a second. <coughs> yeah, I'll just briefly share. Chanchal is searching. This is just an example of our energy journal. This is day before yesterday. I was like, Chanchal is searching. She is on a prowl. She is hunting for a masala. She wants a poetic paragraph that I could share on my classes and earn accolades. Then her desires will be satisfied. Srila Prabhupada says when holy names are spread all, all over, Vaishnava's desires are satisfied. When all are happy, a Vaishnava is happy. But Krishna, please see my lamentable situation. When Chanchal is satisfied, I am happy. Even as I express my lamentation slowly, deliberately and consciously, Chanchal is not with me. I am switching between prayer and awareness rapidly. But initially it may not be so fast for some of you, but at least you can do it paragraph wise. But because I am doing it every day, I am able to switch immediately. Awareness, prayer. Awareness, prayer. I need her support to beg you, Krishna, to release me from the hankering of for fame and name. Now she says that she is not present. I need to say with my voice to you, Krishna, that I love you. I really want no fame, name and fame but to serve you. But this prayer never comes from my voice. It's not a sincere prayer because Chanchal is not convinced that name and fame of this world is not good. She loves it. Blah, 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 blah. So you understood what I'm saying. And then at some point of time, the mind is quiet. Then I come back to a heartfelt prayer and just go on. And So this is a beautiful exercise because at the end of this exercise, even if you don't develop beautiful spiritual emotions for Krishna, at least you realize that on your left side is an amazing personality who is not you and who is controlling your life. If your spouse is abusing you, you can call 100, go to a nearest police station, they will register your complaint. But which police station will register this complaint when you say that your mind is troubling you? Who will come to your help? So this is the reality we all have to confront. The mind is here to stay. And Bhagavad Gita is teaching us how to convert this enemy into a friend. So the first step is awareness. And what we are speaking or what we are doing now is not uh, some whimsical thing. This is like one of the most famous verses from the Upanishads. Two of the most prominent Upanishads, Vitashvatra Upanishad 4.7 and Mundaka Upanishad 3.1.2. This verse is one of the most landmark verses in the Upanishads. Please listen to this, then we will do the exercise. Samane vrikshe purusho nimagno nishaya sho chati muya mana Jushtam yada pashati anyamisham asya mahimanam iti vita shoka The verse is that there is a tree and in this tree there are two birds. Samane vrikshe purusho nimagno nishaya sho chati muya mana One bird in this tree is eating different fruits and getting frustrated and trying to look for a sweet fruit. Jushtam meda pashati anyamisham This frustrated bird simply has to look at the other bird who is peacefully standing on the top branch and smiling. 
who is a real friend of the suffering bird asya mahimanam iti vita shoka if the suffering bird goes to this friend bird and then all the suffering will go away are you getting the cryptic what what does it imply here who is the suffering bird compared to soul and who is this peaceful bird krishna so we are supposed to turn on our right side so what is happening with us we are like a bird on that branch of a tree we are attracted by the pleasures of this world we are attracted by a fruit and we jump we grab that fruit and it's frustrating and we are getting frustrated so many times and then we see sometimes we feel andar kuch to hai peace you know there is something within us which is beckoning us which is calling us we want to go to krishna and we say yes bahut ho gaya material life i'm frustrated and disgusted i want to go to krishna and the bird is now flying to the top branch to be with this friend bird but suddenly as he's flying up he sees another fruit enticing fruit on another branch which is calling him come come enjoy me enjoy me so the bird decides okay let me take this one fruit shayad ye acha hoga hope dies last so that bird goes to that fruit and again goes through a frustrating experience meanwhile krishna is waiting waiting so for so many lifetimes we've been denying missing avoiding krishna now let us come back to krishna that is spiritual life coming back to our higher self so the step is first awareness shila prabhupad told tamal krishna goswami maharaj once first become conscious then become krishna conscious just first separate yourself from your mind you are not your mind just like this watch is not me the watch is separate from me similarly the mind is not me mind ek entity hai usse humko alag karna hai apne aap ko can you do this so what is the what are the steps what is the first step you will do prayer prayer start writing prayers and how long will you write prayers till you are satisfied till you are like you are able to write as long as you want to keep writing prayers but if you feel lost disconnected then what will you do second step awareness journal what is awareness journal write simply what the mind is saying and give a name to your mind you can call it golum chanchal x z captain whatever <laughs> you can call the mind one girl in one of our workshops she she calls her mind as dushasan i don't know why she <laughs> तो सबने एक एक अलग अलग नाम दिया है तो एक नाम दे दो या माइंड ही रख दो सो लाइक दैट सो देन यू कीप राइटिंग व्हाट द माइंड इज सेइंग जस्ट लाइक अ वीडियो कैमरा इज ऑब्जर्विंग इफ यू से माय माइंड इज ट्रबलिंग मी माइंड इज सो नेस्टी दैट इज माइंड माइंड ओनली स्पीकिंग सी व्हेन यू आर एडिंग इमोशंस इन योर ऑब्जर्वेशन दैट मींस द माइंड हैज कम थ्रू द बैक डोर आर यू गेटिंग व्हाट आई एम सेइंग If you say no, Prabhu, my mind is troubling me. I am so fallen. My mind is so treacherous. Well, it could be your mind only saying that. <laughs> Because when the soul's voice is discovered, when your voice is discovered and you are able to say your mind is troubling, you will be blissful. Because soul is always blissful. That's why our pure devotees when they say, "Ami to kamera das vishaya vasana." जागीचे रुदोए पादीचे करम फा भक्तिनो ठाकुर इज सेइंग दैट आई एम आई एम सफरिंग फ्रॉम लस्ट बट एज ही इज सेइंग दैट ही इज ब्लिसफुल बिकॉज़ दैट वॉइस इज नॉट द वॉइस ऑफ द माइंड दैट वॉइस इज अ वेरी इंटीमेट कन्वर्सेशन ऑफ द लवर एंड द बिलवेड सो दैट इज नो माइंड देयर बट वी आर सो ट्रैप्ड बाय द माइंड दैट द माइंड कैन कम इन द गाइज ऑफ कृष्ण द माइंड कैन कम टू द बैक डोर एंड मेक अस वी मे थिंक यू नो आई एम I I have recognized my mind, so don't have any emotions in the second round. First, to write a prayer, write your heartfelt prayers. But if you feel confused, disconnected, restless, simply practice observation without judgment. That is awareness. Is that okay? How long will you keep doing this? How long? No. How long will you do the second? What is the first? Except first, there are three parts to this journal. First part is prayer. You stop your prayer when, when your mind is disturbing you too much. You are unable to offer prayer. Then what do you do? Second step, awareness journal. How long will you write awareness journal? Till the mind goes blank. And when the mind goes blank, then what is the third step you will do? Again, come back to the original prayer. Just write the same prayers again. You will discover your voice. 
that is your voice people say how do i discover my voice my soul's voice right this is the way we discover is that okay can we start the time starts now okay it's nice to see some of you are unable to stop writing that's good <laughs> you are in a flow state you are writing good hare krishna thank you for doing this exercise so what are the three types of journaling we have studied so far first free writing second awareness journal third prayer journal okay i'll tell you how it has benefited me why am uh, why i make you do this exercise if you do it consistently you will discover that behind the voice of the mind is another voice of the mind and behind that is another voice what the mind tells you is not what the mind really wants to tell you and when you when you penetrate these layers you feel empowered i will not be abstract i'll give a spe- specific example uh, like you know when when i started awareness journal i would hear my mind say get up go to the washroom call up this person do that whatever but as i kept practicing awareness journal one day i realized that's not what my re- what really my mind wants to say i could recognize voices of fear approval seeking behavior control these voices i could catch and then as a further practice awareness journal i saw something deeper something from the childhood some patterns repeating some neural pathway some circuit setting the fixed everything was revealed over a period of time it's like you know i did once a communication uh, seminar in london so i spoke about you know the steven covey's famous uh, reflect the feeling ref- rephrase the content reflect the feeling empathetic communication listen don't judge your partner listen understand i did this exercise so one grast the one of my friend he came and told me something very interesting i want to share this with you it is connected exactly to my journaling experience he said when he came back from work one day recently his wife started shouting at him she said you come late from office every day do you have any sense of responsibility towards your family your children and she started and this probably is telling me that my wife started blasting me left right and center and i wanted to give it back to her because she was totally illogical in what she was saying because we are going through some financial difficulties and in london they don't have kam wali bhai coming and helping them in the house so he said we are going through some financial challenges and we had decided that i'm going to work extra and she knew that i'm going to be coming late from office i'm going to be working 3 to 4 hours extra every day she knows it so when i came back late from office and she was shouting at me i wanted to shout back at her and remind her of the agreement that we had decided upon but prabhu ji i stopped myself because you told me in the seminar that don't judge don't shout back listen understand be present i patiently practiced that prabhu ji and you know what happened i told her oh so you are very upset that i am coming late from office i kept listening nodding my head and she went on and on and actually i realized that was not her problem her problem was not that i am coming late from office her problem was that i am not helping in the kitchen <laughs> and that came out as a complaint that you are coming late from office and then when I, and then again i got angry prabhu ji because we had already agreed that i am not going to enter the kitchen kitchen will be entirely her department and everything outside the kitchen including buying groceries i will manage and even the lawn i will clean everything i will do garage i will everything i will do but kitchen she has to manage so when she was shouting at me that i am not helping in the kitchen again i had this urge to shout back at her but i controlled myself i said oh so you are upset that i am not helping in the kitchen i i reflected back what she was saying i rephrased what she was saying i was being empathetic and you know what prabhu ji i realized that her problem was not that i am not helping in the kitchen the real thing came out much later after 15 20 minutes of a rant finally the real thing came out the real issue was that earlier we were going to india every 8 months and now we are not able to go to india we are going once in 2 years 2 and 1/2 years so she is missing her parents a lot 
so that pain came out as not helping in the kitchen and that came out as you were coming late from office so when you were saying this i said wow this is exactly what happens to the mind you know many times we we think i know what is my problem what is my mind's problem but if we simply practice prayer journal and awareness you know the combination of krishna's grace and our awareness helps us peel through layers and we make peace with our own anarthas or inadequacies and we graciously move forward with dignity knowing our small place hum chote hain par khush hain apne aukat mein rehte hain small phate joote pehen ke aasman pe chade हमारे सपने हमेशा औकात से बड़े <laughs> हम छोटे हैं बस छोटे रहो स्मॉल एक्सेप्टिंग आर स्मॉल प्लेस इन दिस यूनिवर्स मेकिंग बीइंग कंफर्टेबल इन आर ओन स्किन नोइंग दैट यू नो आई एम नॉट समबडी ग्रेट एट द सेम टाइम दिस इज कॉल्ड चेतो दर्पण मार्जन वी एक्चुअली सी व्हाट इज हु वी आर व्हेन वी हैव अ कल्चर ऑफ प्रेयर एंड अवेयरनेस सो आई एम गिविंग एन एग्जांपल दैट द द वॉइस दैट so many things the mind conjures up sometimes people think prabhu ji if i if i keep introspection i can know na what is happening no introspection can be dangerous it's not that if you keep thinking people people unfortunately equate thinking with knowing thinking and knowing are two different things you can think 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 and still not know <laughs> you can't excavate what's there within simply by thinking it is revealed as we practice awareness you can't just you can't just achieve things in the inner dimension in the inner world things are revealed we receive when we are present when we are mindful when we are aware so this is the for the three types of journal i wanted you to experience before lunch because it was really now with the easiest part now the, the most difficult part of journaling workshop is over now we are going to do the most exciting journaling called gratitude journal if we practice gratitude journal in the right way you will see at the end of it in one week i guarantee that you will be like you will feel like a billionaire what is more important to be rich or to feel rich uh, i know what you are thinking inside <laughs> <laughs> you are saying so confidently prabhu ji to feel rich is more important than to be rich but inside you are thinking prabhu ji dono ho sakta hai kya but we all know right to feel rich is more important than to be rich. what is the advantage of feeling rich than being rich you don't have to worry about paying taxes <laughs> right in the long run feeling rich is definitely much much better because you could be very wealthy and still be very insecure Yes, exactly. So there is a research which has uh, I saw an amazing study which says that if you practice gratitude journal properly, which we are going to discuss few steps of gratitude journal, at the end of this exercise, after a few days, you will get the same feeling as if all of you are earning some money. Let's say you are you are in a job, whatever salary you are earning. Imagine you get a phone call now, a WhatsApp message saying that from this month onwards, whatever salary you are drawing, you are going to get three times that salary. for the same work you are doing how will you feel what is happening in your heart i can see everybody is beaming <laughs> that's what will happen when we practice gratitude the same kind of feelings you will experience when you practice gratitude journal you actually start feeling wealthy so what we will do we'll just start right away so there are a few steps so you just follow what i'm saying and then we'll make sense of it all So when I say start, you are not going to think. You are just going to write down one, two, three, four like that, as many points as possible for the gifts that you are grateful for. So when I say start, when I play the karta, you are just going to start writing one. It could be like gratitude for uh, good body that you have, two, the job you have, three. I don't know. I mean, you just whatever you are grateful for, but number it. One, two, three, four, ten, twenty. Let's see how many you can write. Everybody clear? Don't start thinking too much. Just free flow. But numbering is important in this first step. Can we start? Yes. Your time starts now.
it could be mundane it could be ordinary it could be something very very ordinary just right it could be for the prasadam that you ate yesterday you know thank krishna for anything Hare Krishna, thank you. So you have numbered, how many of you have numbered more than 10 items for gratitude? 5, 5, wow, anybody more than 30, thank you, 40, how many, 50, 44, 44. wow, thank you. So there are so many things to be grateful for, right? So now what you are going to do, just see that list again, not now, just see for one of the three things and you can in your own way maybe either make a code or entry, see there are one of the three things that is happening, all these 44 items or 20 or 10 whatever you have remembered that you are grateful for, some of those things God arranged for you. Some of those things God allowed you to do. Some of those things where, where God advised you. See, Krishna is always arranging, allowing or advising in our lives. Like I will give an example. Yesterday we had a class for two hours and we were discussing something. So after the class, I was going back to my room and suddenly I remembered, suddenly I felt an inspiration in my heart to go back to the class, the, to the hall. And I had a garland in my hand. Something in my heart told me, go back and give this garland to this particular devotee. So I rushed back and I'm glad I came back because there was a very intimate discussion happening between few of the Mumsari friends. And when I put that garland on this friend of mine, everybody was happy. And then for the next half an hour, there was so much of positive exchange. And then I came back to my room. I realized today morning in my gratitude journal, I wrote, that was God advising, that voice in the heart that we hear and something good happens, that's like Krishna advising you. I once lost my passport, I was traveling in, in one place, I lost my passport bag and then someone, one girl who had come for the retreat saw that and she told from somebody else and I got it. So I see it as Krishna arranging and once I ate, you know, I'm not supposed to eat french fries because I get this shoulder pain and all that, some things I like but I'm not supposed to eat. And one day that was offered to me and it was tempting. So I ate it and nothing happened to me. <laughs> Next day my body was okay. So I said, I immediately could recognize Krishna allowed me to engage in this gratification <laughs> without giving me reaction for it. So that sometimes you are allowed to do certain things. You are advised. Like I lost my, I was chanting in the train. I kept my bead bag and then I got out of the train. I was getting down. I suddenly remembered that a bead bag. I came running back. I picked up my chanting beads. And I got on the train. So next day morning, gratitude journal. Krishna, see, it is like the voice. Something told me in the heart. It was as if Krishna is standing next to me. Just you fancy it like that, and he's telling me, Prabhu, you forgot your bead bag. Not Prabhu, he's a rascal, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> you rascal, you forgot your bead bag. It's there. So I ran back and picked up my bead bag. So externally, it is like as if you just remembered out of the blue. But in the 15th chapter of Gita, Krishna says, Sarvasya chaham ridhisanya vishto matta smitiryanam apohanam cha. So when you remember something, it's Krishna who is next to you telling you, do this. It's not the right thing to do. And sometimes you know you heard this voice, you know this is not the right thing to do. Or this is it. That voice is Krishna. So when the more we practice, so this item that you have written down, 44, see where Krishna has arranged, or Krishna has allowed you, or Krishna has advised you, or if you have thanked Krishna for, if you have thanked God for the parents you have, then Krishna has arranged that for you. So can you just, in one minute, just tick off or, they want that to be again perfect, just whatever way you can connect. You got an idea, basically you got an idea, Krishna is always arranging for us, so doing something for us. 
Okay, so gratitude journal has three very important aspects. You have done the first part. There are two more parts to gratitude journal. The most important was you have actually specifically thanked Krishna for some gifts, right? You have written down 10, 20, 30, 44, you said? How many points? 44. So, so many things to thank Krishna for. This is very, very important. Gratitude is not general. Gratitude is not abstract. It is specific. Sometimes you say, thank you Prabhu for everything. Thank you for everything means thank you for nothing. <laughs> Let us specify what am I grateful for. That makes gratitude more meaningful. Our One of the best examples for expressing gratitude in Bhagavatam is Kunti Devi. When she is praying to Krishna, she is not saying, Krishna, thank you for everything. She says, Yata Rishikesha Kalena Devaki Kamse Naruddhati Chiram Sucharpita Vimochitaham Chasahatma Javibhotpaye Vanathe Namohor Vipaddana She is saying, how Krishna, you protected Devaki from the evil Kamsa. How you protected my children from a series of dangers. Thank you, Krishna, for all of that. And what are the dangers she is recalling one by one? Vishan Mahagne Purushada Darshanat Asat Sabhaya Vanavasa Krishrita Mrude Mrude Neka Maharata Astrato Drona Stratas Mahare Virakshita Krishna, thank you. You saved me out. You saved Bhima from the poison cake, Vishan Mahagne, Purushada Darsha. You saved us from the Pakasu demon when we were Chakra. Asat Sabhaya. You saved my daughter in law, Draupadi, in the vicious assembly of the Kurus. Vanavasa Krishna. You saved us during the exile. Mride Mride Ne Kamharata. You saved us from so many weapons that were hurled against my sons during the war at Kurukshetra. And now, just now you saved my grand, great grandson who was in the womb of his mother from the Brahmastra. So, the ability to make gratitude specific, sorry, uh, yeah, not general, that's very, very important part. That is the first part of gratitude access journal. Second, sometimes gratitude can become boring, mechanical, ritualistic, and cliche. When I started gratitude journal, I was thanking my grandparents because I grew up with them. I was thanking my parents and I was like after some days so why unkoi thank you bolna why cheese you know mind it's it you, it's not easy. It becomes cliche, it becomes ritualistic. So then I discovered something amazing. I call it as fresh gratitude. Something that has happened in the last twenty four hours. So when you Keep your gratitude fresh. Then you are always looking out for good things happening in your life. Because you have to report it in a journal tomorrow morning. So generally we are catching wrong things all the time. We are, we are searching for negativity. That's why the news channels are flourishing. Because we have a negative bi negativity bias. We are always wanting bad news. And news channels know that. So they exploit that. But when we have a culture of fresh gratitude, then we start developing positivity bias. We start looking out for good things in our life that has happened in the last 24 hours. Can can you just shout out any something really good that has happened in the last 24 hours in your life? Something for which you are really grateful? You, are, you came to the temple in the last 24 hours, so that's why you feel very grateful. Yes. yes. Huh? Lamp offering. Today morning you offered lamp, so you are very grateful for that. So, so, so this is one of your fresh gratitude items. So, so in the last 24 hours, we are very grateful for this. I am sure all of us have something which has happened in our life in the last 24 hours for which we are really grateful, right? All of us have. Okay, if you don't have something, it's okay. I am sure there is something that you are really grateful for in the last 48 hours. Last one week, something good has happened to you. See, the idea is not fresh, doesn't mean only in the last 24 hours. Just be grateful for something. Even if something good has happened in the last one week, I'm sure something good must have happened in the last one month, last one year. So, in one year, problem is problem. 
but i'm sure something would must have happened since you took birth kuch to acha hua rahega to wo likho right so aapne to list banaya hai to usme aap dekho is there anything which comes in the category of fresh gratitude something which has happened in the last 24 hours if no write some things as part of fresh gratitude now for the next 2 minutes your time starts now so what are you grateful for that has happened to you in the last 24 hours so there are two steps here gratitude is specific and second it is fresh so gratitude journal has three aspects the first is specific specific, specific. specific. second fresh. fresh and now comes the most important See, I, I don't know if you realize now. Before, as you are uh, searching, what has happened in the last twenty-four hours for which I am really grateful. Some of you must have been blank. It's okay. It happens, you know. Even I've been doing gratitude journal for some time now. But sometimes, even now, sometimes I'm not able to recall more than one or two items. I have a rule of writing five at least in the morning. Five things that I am grateful for in the last twenty-four hours. Sometimes I can't think of more than two or three. Because life sucks sometimes, you know. Like it's not life is not always wonderful. So what happens? I'm searching. I'm searching. What am I grateful for? Like I saw some of you thinking hard. I have realized something that when you are searching for something that as good as happened, although you are not actually feeling grateful, but you are searching for what am I grateful for? That itself makes you so happy. That itself changes the mood. the <laughs> searching uh, what am i grateful for what <laughs> i have seen my mood change immediately it becomes positive so imagine you actually have something to thank that is the power of gratitude even if you are not feeling grateful just dhoonne mein hi maza aata hai dhoonne mein hi ek positivity aata hai anyway that is two thing but the third is the most important which is answer why now i'll explain what this is you have made a list of specific things to thank god you also know that it is fresh now please answer it in one at least one sentence why are you grateful for that now the doesn't have to be very very deep philosophical answer it can be very silly simple like for example uh one of my friends brahmachari cooks He is my very close friend. He came to know that I don't like some sabzis. Like I don't like rajma, chole, arbi. So one day he made arbi in such a way, you know, like he made it like a crispy wafer type. उसको deep fry करके and he made rajma with some Mexican flavor. He called it rajma tacos <laughs> and he made chole with Italian sauce and called it Italian chole. and he fed me these three items and it was like a snack all three items were like snack items very tasty and that next day gratitude journal i mentioned thank you krishna for the exotic prasad it was specific and it was fresh but i had to also answer why yeah because i like good food and i got good prasad that's it simple one line answer i'm a foodie maybe i liked it i had a good experience so the, the idea is when you answer why you are forced to go deep you are forced to add emotion into your gratitude do you understand what i am saying why is very important don't start now i'll tell you when to start writing please try to understand this point about answering why in your gratitude is very important it doesn't have to be a very very big answer i remember one of the brahmachari he saw my journal yeah. that day in the morning because i got a phone call so i had to keep my notepad on my locker and i rushed to take the phone and he was cleaning and he saw that thank you that column for rajma chole he was a young brahmachari who had just joined the ashram and he saw oh prabhu ji is it please thank you bolte krishna so he asked me few days later to you am we are supposed to thank krishna for the gift of pure devotional service so you are thanking krishna for prasadam also and some fancy food item isn't that monday in ordinary and this kind of journaling isn't it self indulgent what are we actually doing so i told him it is better to remember god for the ordinary things in our life 
than to forget God in the pursuit of the extraordinary. So we have extraordinary goals, you know, we have we want to go back home, back to God, right? but in that pursuit we may forget God. But small things in our life, you know, your child has done something good in school today and you're thanking Krishna for that. Whatever, small things in life, but at least you're coming closer to Krishna. That is more important. So why is very important because when you answer why, you are forced to add emotion in that gratitude. So can, this will take some time. Can we do this for 5 minutes? You have read, already written 25-30 items. Pick up any one of the items that you are thanking God for. Can you write why you are thankful to God for that? Can we start now? Don't look at me. Start. Sorry, you know, you already made a list of things that you are grateful for, right? There is a specific list and it is also fresh, I guess. Now just answer why are you grateful for that? Can you do that? So gratitude journal, how do we practice? First we write specific. specific things to thank God for. Second, fresh. 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 And third, why. why? Answer why. Are happy people grateful? Yes. Not necessary. Are grateful people happy? Yes. yes. There's a difference. See, um, Happiness is actually a feeling, it comes and goes. But we focus as devotees, we focus more on gratitude than being happy. Because gratitude is a choice. Happiness is a feeling which, we, which is not in our control. But gratitude is something which we have a choice. And happiness is abstract, but gratitude is actually a practice. You can practice gratitude every day. You can choose to practice gratitude. Happiness is not something which you can get anytime you want. Happiness is like weather, seasons, it keeps changing. Sometimes you are happy, sometimes you are not, sometimes you are anxious. But gratitude is something, we may not be grateful for everything, but we can at least be grateful at all times, maybe for something else, maybe not for the situation that I am in right now. But gratitude is a choice. And the more we practice gratitude, uh, and more we prefer gratitude over happiness, more peaceful we will be in the long run. So the problem with happiness is when we are happiness con uh, centered, I want ha I want to be happy. I want to be happy. If that is our mood, then it is risky because happiness has a problem. If you feel happy something about something in life, you will see that suddenly you become greedy. Happiness leads to greed. You want more of that, and when you become greedy, you become entitled. And when you are entitled, you are ungrateful. And when you are ungrateful, you are miserable. That's how, you know, the Gita says happiness leads to misery, right? This is a very, Gita's common statement. E boga, dukha yone. People think, how can pleasure, enjoyment lead to misery? Well, if you decode it, this is how you decode it. Happiness leads to misery. How? Happiness makes you greedy. That greedy, greediness makes you entitled. Entitlement makes you ungrateful. And when ungrateful, you are miserable. That's how the whole thing happens. That's a flow chart. Therefore, let us practice gratitude. And will gratitude practice make you develop love for Krishna? Yes. Well, something else will happen before you get love of Krishna. You may get love of Krishna immediately or you may not get, but at least one thing is guaranteed. When you have gratitude practice, you will realize that God, you may not love God immediately when you practice gratitude, but you will realize that God loves you. That's a big deal. Even if you don't develop loving feelings for God, but practicing gratitude makes you realize, oh, God loves me so much. He's doing so much for me. Like imagine you, you know, somebody has done 20 favors for you, like you're thanking that person. Are, you know, you did this for me. Thank you. You got me a job in Mumbai. You helped me get a, a house in Mumbai. You Thank you so much. So you keep thanking him for 20 things. After thanking him or her for 20 things, what is the 21st thing that you would spontaneously say? Well, you have done so much for me. What can I do for you? Won't that naturally come out of your mouth? I mean, in the sense, you, you are thanking someone, a desire to serve that person will naturally come. Similarly, when we have a gratitude practice, you will see that one day, as you are thanking Krishna for all the gifts, you will, and inadvertently a sentence will slip in your journal. Krishna, you've done so much for me. What 
कैन आई डू फॉर यू हाउ कैन आई सर्व यू हाउ कैन आई प्लीज यू जनरली वी वॉन्ट गॉड टू प्लीज अस जनरली वी आर लुकिंग फॉर गॉड टू गिव अस गिफ्ट बट आर भक्ति बिगिन्स आर ब्लिस इन स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ हैपन्स वेन वी स्टार्ट लुकिंग एट द लॉर्ड एज नॉट आर सर्वेंट हु इज सर्विंग अस बट वी वॉन्ट टू प्लीज द लॉर्ड दैट्स वॉट माधवेंद्र पुरी डीड राइट दैट्स वॉट सिक्स गोस्वामीज आर डूइंग वी आर कैरिंग आउट द लॉर्ड्स डिजायर वी आर मेकिंग द लॉर्ड कैरी आउट आर डिजायर बट इफ यू कीप प्रैक्टिसिंग ग्रैटिट्यूड इवन दो वी डोंट लव गॉड बट वी रियलाइज गॉड लव मी गॉड हेज डन सो मच फॉर मी and then although i may not want to love god i land up loving god because he's done so much He'll, see when we realize god loves me it's a matter of time before we start developing loving feelings for god that famous bollywood song nana karte pyar tumhi se kar baithe karna tha inkar magar ikrar tumhi se kar baithe so what is that song so this lady is saying i wanted to say no 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 but i landed up saying yes actually i met my nephew it actually is a true story my nephew is a good boy but you know little anyway my sister's son so i can't really flatter him but he got married to a very good girl so they came to temple and there was a reception here and um, and the family everybody was there so they came to the temple blessings all that so i was asked to speak so i looked at her and all the relatives are there and i said how did you end up marrying him <laughs> so everybody laughed and then she said something interesting she said that they were seven or eight years together in the medical college so they were all part of the same group we were friends like everyone else at the end of eight years i was convinced whenever i had a difficulty whenever i was complaining about my other friends other issues studies he was always there like the paramatma silent witness always nodding his head being there lending an empathetic ear at the end of my medical internship i realized that he loves me so much and i don't know how when what i also developed the same emotions so i felt this is exactly how it happens with krishna we as you practice gratitude we realize, we realize krishna is always there krishna is observing sanctioning taking care of our needs being there for us and then when we realize krishna loves me so much very seamlessly we also start developing emotions for krishna so therefore gratitude journal is extremely important and uh, if we cannot practice gratitude now remember bhakti the final exam we are all supposed to practice gratitude when we are dying right all the people all the glorious devotees spiritual practitioners they are called great because when they are dying they are very grateful what is death death is when you are getting lot of gifts or your all the gifts are being taken away everything is being taken away and we are supposed to be grateful now if we can't practice gratitude when we are getting how will we practice gratitude when it's being taken away from us interesting na no? kabhi socha iske upar so right now we are right now everything is not being taken away still we are finding it difficult to practice gratitude so it's food for thought so there are four types of journaling we have done so far what is the first one free writing what is free writing just write don't stop the pen second awareness journal is basically what you do you separate yourself from your mind and you write what the mind is saying then third prayer journal fourth gratitude journal i'll pause here we'll take a few questions and then post lunch we are going to discuss because gratitude is also ultimately selfish in the sense we are only talking about oh i got so many gifts my life is so good we have to go beyond ourselves so now now we'll enter the world of blessing journal appreciation journal because bhakti is not about me i mine you can't feel fulfilled in life if you're only talking about yourself to get higher realizations we need to go beyond ourselves and that is what we will explore post lunch the different ways we can journal by which we can go beyond my existence and tap a higher dimension of happiness right now all our happiness is centered on i but how do we access happiness which is beyond me that we will discuss post lunch
but whatever we have done so far the four types of journal if there are any questions or comments on this we could take yes i see your hand and then i'll take your question no please pehle madam ka lekin then sorry yeah it will help everyone to you Hello. Yeah, Hari Krishna, Prabhuji. You sir mentioned that you uh, offered gratitude to Krishna for uh, getting that uh, lovely food. So uh, you didn't uh, mention your friend who prepared the food, or what is more important? <laughs> we'll discuss that in the depreciation journal. There are three different. I, can I share my experience? I uh, offer gratitude every day to Mark Zuckerberg because I could talk to my son on WhatsApp. ओके गुड It's not important, but whatever helps you to become more aware and connect with Krishna. And you have to give a name to mind. No, right? no, no, not needed. As I told you in the beginning, there is no nothing sacrosanct here. There's nothing like sh- it's not a should thing. I'm just sharing what I do. Okay. You don't have to. You don't have to do it necessarily the way I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm not speaking some. Uh, okay, whatever comes naturally. This na- I'm just sharing what I'm doing. You may, you may do it better, whatever suits for you. Okay, so uh, whatever helps. Rupa Goswami has given us a formula: Ena kena prakare na manha Krishna niveshaya. Some or other fix your mind on Krishna. Whatever helps you to fix your mind on Krishna, whether giving a gender, not giving a gender, whether calling simply mind, or even not practicing this, it's, all this is secondary. In fact. After this workshop, in one place, one person said, "I have got so many things to do already, Prabhu Ji. And this journaling, now, the tension is coming. Road journaling, will it take so much time?" <laughs> I said, "Please don't journal." I told him, "This is not for you. Uh, the, the, the goal of this workshop is not that you should write every day journal. The goal of this workshop is please, please see how you can connect with God. Somehow, come closer to God. If journaling helps, great." Now, if the advantage of this workshop is journaling is journaling will help you discover your unique ways of connecting with God. For me, journaling helped me discover my unique ways of connecting with God, and also I realized that journaling is the way I connect with God. आपको समझ में आ रहा है? I started journaling to discover my ways of connecting with God, and then I realized that यही अच्छा है. यही. This is this is the way I connect with God. ठीक है यस विल टेक योर क्वेश्चन नो इन द अवेयरनेस जर्नलिंग वी व्हेन वी प्रैक्टिस ग्रेजुअली हरे कृष्णा इन द अवेयरनेस जर्नलिंग यू यू जस्ट स्टेटेड दैट इवन वी ग्रेजुअली प्रैक्टिस इट हेलो व्हेन वी प्रैक्टिस ग्रेजुअली वी केम टू रियलाइज देयर आर डिफरेंट लेयर ऑफ वॉइसेस ओलम्पिक्स पुलिस फोर्स एटिकेट सोशल लाइफ But what why Harry Potter is fascinating is because in the world of the wizards also they also have their own college, own Olympics, banking systems. For all the world, their own sports, their own Quidditch, their own world. So 
when you enter that platform, nine three quarters, and you enter that world, Oxford School of Magic, <laughs> the whole thing opens up, right? Similarly, the world we are living in right now is the external world. You, all of you know how to sit. For example, you are all sitting very graciously right now. You are sitting with grace. You will say Namaste, Hare Krishna. In India, from childhood, we are taught how to respect others who are grown up, who are senior to you. Call them, address them as Namaste, Uncle. You may not be your uncle, but we call them Uncle, Namaste, Auntie. And we are taught, don't dig your nose. Say please, say thank you, sit straight. All this etiquette we are taught about the world outside of us. Now, my question to you is, how many of you have been taught about the rules and laws that operate in the inner world, the wizard world, under? Anybody taught here in childhood? Beta, darling, you know, inside there is ego. False ego is the mafia dawn. And he has two servants, mind and intelligence. You know what the mind does? You know what? They, anybody taught all of this? Yeah. You have been taught? Wow. Yeah, about mind, intelligence, wow. Most of us were not taught. I was not taught. Many of us were not taught, right? But there is a whole world inside ego, mind, intelligence. So, when we practice awareness journal, we actually make, we are entering this world of the wizards. We are entering our inner world. Upanishads explain theoretically many things, but you realize it when you actually practice awareness. So the antakaran, antakaran means inside world, there are four parts to it. Manas, buddhi, ahankar and chitta. Manas is all the sub, you know, subconscious mind, everything you have done in the past, that impression is there. So that is stored in a region, that, that part where it is all stored, that is called Manas. Like for example, I was going for a program, auto rickshaw mein tha mein. So the traffic stoplight, my auto stopped. And next to me was another auto. And one pick old Bollywood song, 1950s ka, which I had heard when I was in college. Itna saal bhul gaya tha. For maybe 10 15 seconds, so chalao. Dil tadap tadap ke kehra na 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 something. Mukesh Kagan. Just for 10 seconds. And that fellow went off, my, my auto went off, and I forgot about it. For 10 seconds, I was stored. Tha. So I went to the program, everybody is seated, I met everyone, Hare Krishna, smile, kiya. Phir kartal nikala. Radha Madhav Gana tha. Jai Radha Madhav. So I picked up the kartal. My eyes closed. And suddenly my mind, what is coming up? <laughs> no, 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 no. I opened my eyes and everybody looking at me. Are you Prabhuji? Abhi Bhagwan ka naam lenge. Andar kya chal raha hai? Oh, two minutes ke liye wo gana hi baj raha hai. And I'm like, just be aware, be present. I just smiled at it because it's hel you, you are helpless. It's no point fighting, it's just what it is. It's a manas. Impression say itne salon ka, itna past ka. So manas is all the past. That is manas. Buddhi is the mind which is presently aware. Right now you are present in the class, you are alert, you are awake, you are active. So what is that which is making all this happen? That is called buddhi. Manas and buddhi are these two. Ahankar is a sense of identity. I'm a Marwadi, I'm a Jain, I'm beautiful, I'm man, I'm woman, I'm Brahman, I'm Vaishya, all that is Ahankar and Chitta. Chitta is, it's like, you know, I don't know if you, it's like that fine thin layer which covers all, it's, it's a overall composite, it's a, it's a, it's a whole thing within which Manas, Buddhi and Ahankar operate. That is called Chitta. Chitta is the, the sum total of all of this. Like, you know, when I was doing fasting, I used to eat this only non-cooked raw. So one intelligent devotee made uh, a roll with all vegetables or whatever and with a thin coating of a rice, uh, rice coating, tha, rice cup, banana layer, tha, thin, that was covering this, it was a wrap. So it was like, when I saw that, I knew that, that thin covering was the chitta, under manas buddhi hankar hai. Chitta is what is the, it separates the soul from this material world. See, the 
the soul is always pure we have nothing to do with the material world we experience the material world through chitta it's like aapka smartphone mein video camera hota hai right so if you switch on the video camera and then you see this plastic bottle so you are seeing this bottle you are seeing the room through that screen of that camera right so chitta is like that screen chitta is what helps the soul see the world it is your window to the world so chitta when we say na cheto darpanam when you chant hari krishna what happens the chitta gets cleansed so when you start writing practicing awareness journal what happens is aapke manas mein kya hai samko samajh mein aata hai buddhi buddhi is active manas ahankar aapka recognize kar pate hain aur chitta the deep rooted layers what is there it's all visible to and when it is visible to you, you don't get disturbed you make peace with it like at a, at a certain point of time i came face to face with my with what is driving me basically i am driven by fear approval seeking behavior and control and uh, there are a lot of history but when that was discovered it was not painful it was like it was like cleansing chitta when it is cleansed it also makes you peaceful it doesn't make you disturb so these are the four parts of the antakaran so awareness journal is a way we peel off these layers and things are revealed but it has to be substituted it has to be complemented with prayer journal otherwise mind is very tricky mind can cheat you even hitler used to write journals so journaling is simply on its that is there are prerequisites for journaling also i think we'll discuss that in the second session we can't just keep writing journal we are not we can't avoid social life we can't avoid social interactions in the name of journaling you know journaling is not a substitute for healthy social meaningful relationships so so all that we do then we lead a healthy balanced life then journaling is facilitates the inner journey is that okay yes we'll take your question and then your question hari krishna prabhu uh, it is said in the occult world that parloki vidya basically uh, when you want to manifest something you need to be grateful first so when you practice this grateful uh, gratitude journal then only the things get manifest in your life so how do you look at this part because we are generally grateful for the things which we have but when you go into the deeper science the uh, uh, the different kind of knowledge in that you need to be sometime want to manifest something in your life so there we use this gratitude journal no, i don't i don't practice gratitude for that i practice gratitude for coming closer to krishna See, bhakti is not about achieving. Bhakti is about receiving. Bhakti is not about controlling. We are not yogis. Bhakti is about a loving relationship. In love, there is no control. When you want to manifest things, when you want to get and acquire things, then uh, that's not what I practice, and that's not bhakti yoga. That's not part of bhakti yoga. In bhakti yoga, our whole mood is how to develop a loving relationship with God. and where there is love there is no control and when there is no love there is control so people who want control people who want to get things of this world they want to manifest certain situations they are ambitious they may be lacking a sweet reciprocal relationship with god those who have a sweet loving relationship with god they don't they want they don't want things they want god they don't want things from god that was the difference between duryodhan and arjun Duryodhan wanted Krishna's resources. Arjun wanted Krishna. So when both Duryodhan and Arjun went to Krishna asking for help for the Mahabharat war, Krishna told that on one side my entire army will be there, Narayan is there, and one side I will be there. So Arjun said, "I don't want your army. I want you." And Duryodhan was happy with Krishna's army. So we are not Duryodhan. We are Arjun. We want Krishna. so therefore when we practice gratitude it is not with an intention that if i practice gratitude i'll get more that's not our mood 
Prabhupada uh, told us in one lecture I was hearing recently, Shri Prabhupada said, so devotees are not mercantile community. We are not doing business with Krishna. When Krishna came back from the forest after herding the cows, the gopis did not go and check Krishna's pocket and see what have you brought for us. <laughs> Prabhupada is saying in that class. So we are not doing business dealing with Krishna. Therefore, this doesn't taste well for devotees. Like we don't get into all of this. There are different people who are practicing this. Unko salamat, unko all the best for them. We prefer to practice gratitude journal to develop a relationship with Krishna. for service. Yes, please. This is the last question we'll take and then we'll break for lunch. You, who is uh, running the, you are there, you are running what's happening, yes, yes so, please. So Hare Krishna Prabhuji, first of all, thank you so much for providing all this very insightful information on journaling. Uh, my query is that much uh, as, what should I say, I like journaling, I like writing, but what I want to know is that I've begun to realize, I used to do a lot of that and then it stopped for some period of time for certain reasons. reasons. I've also realized that journaling, if one has to get into it, we require, we need to have some amount of discipline. Um, without that, it doesn't happen a daily practice, etc. Is there any way one, you can help uh, one understand as to how to get into more of disciplining this uh, mind to sit and really focus and concentrate. I don't know if I've expressed well. See, anything you want to do, anything good you want to do, you have to discipline to lagta hai So, there is no shortcut and there's no easy way of saying this. It actually begin small, no? start with five minutes journal, don't, do, don't have big ambitions. The best way to develop, see, once you have, see, sometimes people think, Acha Prabhu ji, aapko ecstasy aata hoa na, journaling mein. No, every day journaling is not ecstatic. See, good habits don't give you happiness. Good habits, okay. How many of you have a habit of doing yoga? Anybody doing yoga every day? Yeah. So, when, what happens when you do yoga? It's not that you are ecstatic. You just pick up your yoga. It's a habit. So, you pick up your yoga mat at a, at a particular time and you do yoga. It's not that every day when you're doing yoga, you are like, you have a halo around your head and you are like ecstasy. No, you do that yoga. But the advantage of having a good habit is that because you're doing yoga every day, overall you have good health and you're happy. Similarly, I write journal every morning. Not every day is ecstatic. But because it's a habit, the overall effect of this habit is I'm fulfilled, I'm productive, I'm happy. I feel a deep sense of connection with myself, with God. Overall, you see? So similarly, and this has happened because starting me was a discipline. Tha. If you ask me how to develop discipline, well, the answer to that is you develop discipline by discipline. <laughs> how to become sincere? Well, you become sincere by becoming sincere. In ISKCON, we have what we call as how to do it questions. And the answer to all these how to do it questions is you do it by doing it. You know? so. And when people persist and they ask, no, Prabhuji, I really want to know how to do this, then I tell them, okay, stop asking how, ask why. Why do you want to journal? Uh, because I want to be peaceful. Why do you want to be peaceful? Uh, because I want to be productive in life. Why do you want to be productive? Because I want to perfect my human form of life. Why do you want to perfect your human form of life? Because, because, you know, you have to, when you answer why, you are forced to think hard. When you ask how, you don't have to worry because the speaker will answer how and I just have to listen. But why is a difficult question. Introspection, journaling, people, it's not a wonderful exceed. We think introspection is maja aata hai. Nahi, maja nahi aata hai. Introspection has to be disrupting and disturbing. <laughs> we want everything to be peaceful. Life is not Life is not hal wish pehle nikalta hai, baad mein amrut nikalta hai. So how is always Discipline is everything, there is to be some discipline. Thank you. There are no shortcuts. Shortcut is the quickest way to go to a place where you are not going. <laughs> so that's the way it is.
Any, any, anybody else has anything to say on this? Yes. Depends on how disturbed you are. Depends on how it is impeding your day-to-day -day functioning. I generally do journaling at a particular time. I don't carry it all the time with me. I prefer to do breathing also. I just pause and I connect to myself. Because what happens now, many of us, our breathing is very shallow. So when you have deep breathing, you will see that a lot of things get sorted also. So, अगर आप हर चीज का सिस्टम बनाएंगे ना जर्नलिंग करना है अच्छा दस मिनट करना है उस पर भी प्रेशर आ जाएगा इट डिफीट्स द होल पर्पस सो आई डोंट वांट थिंग्स टू बी आर्टिफिशियल आई जस्ट वांट यू टू गेट एन एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ जर्नल ऑलरेडी आई कैन सी दैट यू आर ट्राइंग टू मेक अ सिस्टम आउट ऑफ इट यू आर ट्राइंग टू गेट इट फिट इट इन टू डे टू डे स्केड्यूल एंड यू आर ऑलरेडी गेटिंग एंगजाइटी नाउ ये सब कैसे होगा रोज कैसे लिख पाएंगे इतना सारा जर्नल है मेरे लाइफ में इतना प्रॉब्लम है ये नया प्रॉब्लम आ गया <laughs> अरे टेंशन जिंदगी में खुश रहो ऑलरेडी लाइफ में बहुत टेंशन है सो बट आई आई डोंट इफ यू हर्ड ऑफ एंड्रयू व्यूबरमैन उसका पॉडकास्ट आर वेरी पॉपुलर ही इज अ न्यूरो साइंटिस्ट प्रोफेसर ऑफ न्यूरो बायोलॉजी इन स्टैंडफर्ड एंड आई वाज एम्यूज्ड व्हेन ही गेव इन वन ऑफ हिज पॉडकास्ट ही स्पीक्स अबाउट हाउ व्हेन आई आई वाज देयर जनरली फॉर नॉट आई डोंट नो ऑल दिस मेडिकल थिंग्स बट ही इज राइट्स हाउ So medical tests have proven that by journaling every day, your blood pressure improves. Your so many benefits. I was shocked. Health benefits, which is apparently, I mean, it doesn't make sense how it's connected to journaling, but it gives a whole lot of things. So there are a lot of benefits of journaling. But journaling as a prerequisite, as I told you, association. Also, sattva guna is one of the prerequisites for journaling, which means you need to slow down your life. If you are always on the move. And then you pick up your journal also. Then you can't really connect. थोड़ा तो एक शांति से बैठो, थोड़ा स्नान करो, relax करो. सत्वा गुना is very important. Association is very important. And the attitude of uh, connecting to higher wisdom, scriptures is also important. We'll do that in the post lunch session. Okay, we'll stop here. Andrew. Andrew Huberman. I don't know how to pronounce H U B R M A N Huberman. Okay, we'll stop here. Please, we'll break for lunch. Please come back and we'll discuss blessing journal, appreciation journal, and scriptural journal, wisdom journal. That is. So these are the three we'll discuss post lunch. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.